Okay, I'm having a conversation with the MD of the State Transport Company, uh, Nana Akomia, but he's also a member of the Communications Directorate of the governing New Patriotic Party. It's two weeks to election 2020. Mm. Why should Ghanaians opt for you again, your party? Well, <laughs> I think you put that question wrongly. Um, the question, in my view, should be why are Ghanaians going to opt for us again? Okay. Why should they opt for you the same? Well, the, the evidence is all over the, the place. Um, our main challenger, President Mahama, doesn't have the credibility to command the support of a majority of the people of this country. I mean, it's very clear. I mean, um, and when I say credibility, I don't even mean manifesto promises by his party that were not fulfilled. I'm talking of his own beliefs that he communicated to Ghanaians. Um, and when you look at the treatment he himself is giving to his own beliefs, you see a lot of talking from both sides of his mouth and looking forward and backwards at the same time. For example, he told us that uh, paying uh, training allowances for training nurses and teachers was a bad principle, a bad policy. He actually cancelled it. He gave cogent reasons in his view for cancelling it. He even staked his political fortune on it. That even if he loses the election, he's not going to give in. Because he believed that it was very good for the country, that the country did not pay training allowances. So four years later, when you come and tell Ghanaians that you're going to do it, there's a certain dissonance in the minds of Ghanaians that what, what does the man really stand for? Beyond that, um, student utility bills, he removed them and said that it wasn't good. Uh, people should be able to, people should be responsible for their own bills. That's why they can be responsible for what, how much water they use, how much electricity. Now he says he's going to maintain them, you know. Um, there are several of them. He says he's going to correct his mistakes. But he hasn't told the Ghanaian what those mistakes were and how he's going to correct them. If you say to Ghanaians, I made mistakes, give me another chance. You need to tell them what mistakes you made so they know exactly what you are talking about and how you are going to correct them. For example, he said that he will pay depositors' funds within one year. Of course, now depositors have been paid largely. But we remember his people telling us that if you went and invested your money wrongly, you didn't consult government and you lose your money. Why should government come in and, and reinvest you? So with that policy stance in those days, now there's an about 10. When you tell the Ghanaian now that you're going to pay within one year, there's dissonance. There's a certain um, disbelief. Now you look at the man, President Mahama, as president of Ghana, going for re-election. He's able to tell Ghanaians that you cannot criticize him unless you have been president before. And he actually tells Ghanaians the people who can criticize him. He actually names them. So it's only President Rawlings, the unfortunate, and then President Kufour. They, he would take their criticism because they have been presidents before. Now, a, a man who is seeking re-election is able to tell you this in your face. If you voted for him again for another four years and he's not going to seek re-election this time, can you imagine how he'll treat you? When he knows he has to come to you for your vote, he's able to tell you this, that unless you have been president, you, you can't criticize him. You are not fit to criticize him. You're probably take, quoting him out of contest, aren't you? What did he say? He was referring to the capacity to judge him. And he says that there are only few people who have the experience, and these are the people who can criticize him. I'm not sure it is as blunt as you're putting it. Almost, it's also almost as though all 30 million Ghanaians have never been present, so no one should criticize him. I'm not sure that's what he meant, was it? But what, what could he have possibly meant? Because that's why I said to you that in case you thought you misunderstood it, or maybe you were taking him out of contest, he actually went ahead to tell you that people who can 
So that shows you that he knows precisely what he's talking about. He said that he would take the criticism from two people because they've been presidents before. Now you, Maru, you haven't been president. The president I, of a club. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been president. So the man says, until you have been president, you are not, you don't have the capacity to criticize him. He told us. So I'm saying that. So are these not the mistakes he said he's coming to correct? The errors of statements like that? For he hasn't, instance. but you see, that's why I say he hasn't told us the mistakes. But we know. How do we know? We know that he erred in a number of ways. That's why we voted him out in 2016. How, how do you know that, a man's mistakes? He's saying that on, now he has learned in opposition. How do you know a man's mistakes unless he tells you what the mistakes are? But why not the mistakes? Because there that, are people who defend those, those sentiments and those actions that he took. There are people who defend it even up to today. So if you're able to tell the, 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 the Ghanaian electorate when you are going to beg them for four more years, you're able to tell them they can't criticize you. If they give you the power for four, and this time you don't need to go back to them, then what you tell them unless God intervenes? Now, he told us that people outside government, they don't know what's happening in government. So you shouldn't be listening to them. He told us, told Ghanaians, that those who are not in government, they don't know. They can just say whatever they want. Now, he is out of government. So, what do we take what he's saying? So, I mean, so what, those what are his problems. Tell me about your rights. What good things have you done? I mean, if you look at the last three and a half years. Four years. Well, okay, four years. Um, Akufado has created a new regions. New regions? Yes. Now, these are long standing demands from people. In fact, um, if you look through, I'm sure you as a, uh, a major uh, uh, media house, you know that these are long-standing desires of the people for these new regions. The, the NDC have talked about it, about doing it for them the, the longest while. Akufado came. He did it. So there's a certain impression of somebody who can do what he says. Somebody who you know where you stand with him. You may not even agree, but you know that the things that have to be done, if it's resolved that these things have to be done, this man will do it. So because this demand for new regions has been long-standing. If you look into the NDC how, manifesto... How have the regions benefited the people of OT, for instance? But that's a different question. If you went there today, the new capitals, the chiefs, when President Akufado goes from, what they tell him, the chief man and so on, the new capitals, the level of infrastructure development that is going on to give them the, the status of capital re, uh, cities is amazing. I don't think we've, we, we've told that story well enough, but if you send your team to the new capitals and you see the infrastructure development that is going on. It's just remarkable. The fact that Accra is being developed as a capital doesn't make Sege or Adan any better. It's the same thing. Sege is not the capital. No, I'm saying Sege is in Greater Accra. Accra is the capital. Sege and Adan are in Accra or Greater Accra. We have a regional capital here. It doesn't mean they are developing It's like, it's like saying that having the, the AU head office in the Addis Ababa, Ababa yes. or having the African Free Trade Office exactly. in Accra doesn't mean it. It's it means point. a lot. You, it's up to you to exploit it. Do you think it's for nothing that America has the United Nations head office? Do you know the benefit that New York City and the Americans have? It's up to you to, to, to exploit it. Now, the people in Techiman, the people in the, the new capitals, they are seeing developments that they've never seen before. And it's remarkable. So that's the new regions. The Monumental Free Secondary School. One of the things that gets me completely frightened is that the NDC is claiming that they actually introduced free SHS. When every small boy who is more than 10 years know that they were against free SHS. But today they are claiming it. But Akufuado within one year, started implementing free SHS. We don't have a lot of time, but the impact of that policy, and of course, free SHS comes with the extension of basic school from JHS to SSS. So what it means is that 
every Ghanaian child will be assured of education up to the standard of secondary school. It's never happened in this country. The impact for removing intergenerational poverty is awesome. And when you look at the reviews internationally that a third world country is able to do this, you feel so proud as a Ghanaian. The, 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 the woman who comes to sell granuts at CTFM with her child strapped at the back probably makes 10 cities a day. They can't take your money and give it to her. But if the state guarantees education for that child, that two-year child strapped at her back, in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, that intergenerational transfer of poverty from, the, from that woman to her children will be broken. And it reflects in the life of all of us. Okay. I mean, the, the, my parents you know, started off as a farmers in my village at Insutem because of education. That cycle is broken. Their children, which is myself, will not, I mean, and our children, are not going to be at that level anymore, forever. So free SHS. So free SHS free. and mm. millions of Ghanaians, and also one of the big problems we have in this country is income distribution. The rich are extremely rich. The poor are extremely poor. We've grappled with finding ways of redistributing income. Free SHS is a clear example of redistribution of income okay. and letting ordinary people share the oil wealth. All right. One district, one factory. We uh, don't have time. We don't have a time.